We now come to the final part on the section on data preparation by focusing on how we can merge two existing data sets into one. I brought for you here two example data sets. The one's called GenieJoin and the other is GPJoin. Very commonly, it's the case that you want to analyze the relationship between two variables, like for example, GDP and Gini, the Gini coefficient that you can only obtain from different data sources. So for example, here, the data on the Gini index, which is a measure for inequality, um, comes from the uh, World Income uh, Inequality Database, uh, whereas the information about the GDP um, here comes from, from the World Bank Database. And if you wanna study the relationship between Gini and GDP, or you wanna make a figure um, in which you have a scatter plot illustrating the relationship between GD and GDP, your task is basically to take these two data sets and to merge it into one. Um, and since this is happening quite frequently, it is obviously something um, that I would consider to be part of these six basic um, data preparation routines uh, that we mentioned at the very beginning. Um, and they will basically the, the last of the routines that we, that, we will, that we will cover here. Important message right from the beginning, there are different ways of joining two data sets together and which one you should go for depends on your theoretical um, uh, thoughts uh, or your, your research interest or the nature of the data sets. The good thing is all these different ways of merging data sets use functions that work very, very similarly. So uh, we start just with one way of merging these two data sets and then see how the rest um, goes. So um, all these merging functions have a similar name. They end with um, join and all of them are from the package dplyr. The uh, first one with which we start, and that is that we use to illustrate the whole, um, whole functioning, is called left join. Um, left join takes a couple of arguments. The first argument is called x, and um, x is here also a synonym for the so-called left data set. And we can choose either of the ones. In our case, let's, uh, let's take the, uh, the data set genie join. And the second argument, a oh, surprise, it's called y. And is it, it's also called the right data, um, uh, data set for joining because it's well, obviously on the right as compared to x. And uh, here we have the two data sets that we want to join. Um, now, thing is, um, how do we join them? How does R actually know which column in which data set corresponds to the other column? So um, here we, for us, it's completely obvious that we have information about country and year um, and in both of the data sets and it makes sense that they should be joined on the columns country and year and that the GDP of um, Greece in the year 2017 should be in the same row as the Gini coefficient for Greece in the year 2017. But for R, this is not that crystal clear because if you look exactly on the column names, you also see here that they are written slightly differently. And this happens frequently, like in the, in the World Bank data here, a uh, country is written um, with, a, um, uh, with, with a large letter at the beginning, uh, and so is year. Um, however, uh, the, all the letters are small letters in, in case of the Gini data set. So we somehow need to tell R which data, uh, which column should um, be joined with which other column uh, in the data set. And to, to do this, we use um, the argument by, and we um, provide um, a name vector. So we use the function C. We then use a string. We write the name of the relevant column in the left data set. So in our case, that's Gini join. Let me say, okay, uh, the name of this column is country. Uh, and then we say that equals to the name of the column in the right data set, in this case, GP join. So that's country written with large C in the beginning. 
to make this a bit readable. Let's add uh, grow breaks. And um, after we've added the first condition, we, we now just add the second correspondence because we do not only want to join by country, we also want to join by year. And again, in the left data set, the column of interest is year written with a small y. And in the right data set, it's year written with a um, large y. And this is all we need. If we execute this, we see that we receive a new data set um, that contains information that comes from both of the original data sets. So um, let's call this GDE GDP uh, left, left join. And now let's have a look at what R actually did. You might be surprised because here um, we see that there are four rows in the GDP join data set, only two in the, in the Genie join data set, and now we come up with a data set that only have two rows. It might be a little bit surprising, surprising in the sense that you might have expected a bigger one. The reason why we only have two rows, however, has to do with the function we used for joining, namely left join. Left join is a function that prioritizes the left um, data set we provided here, meaning that it own, the final data set here only contains those observations for which the left data set had observations. The left data set Gini join only has observations for Greece in the year 2015 and 2017. So by using the function left join, we say that the final data set, the join data set, at most has two observations for the year 2015 and 17 for Greece. And so what R does, it looks into the um, data set GDP join. Are there any observations for Greece in the year 2015 and 17? There are no information about Greece in the year 2015, so nothing is added. There is information on Greece in the year 2017. So um, R adds the column GDP to this data set, but only for the year 2017 because um, 2018 is not part of the original data set on the left data set, so it's removed. And for 2015, R adds missing value because there is no information in the right data set uh, to do so. Now, you might ask yourself whether there is an alternative way to preserve more of the, of, of the data here in the right data set. Um, and we can do so by using an alternative um, joining function, namely, wow, surprise, there is also um, a function called right join. So let's just separate this, execute the, the function and look at the result. And now you see here that um, we have four lines, but that again, not all the information from the original data sets is used. Now it's just the case that the observations from the right data set um, took priority. So if you look at the right data set, we have information for Germany in 2017-18 and for Greece in 2017-18. So the joint data set will only feature information on these four observations. And uh, this is exactly what we see here in the resulting data set. Since the Gini data set only contains information for Greece and only for 2015 and 17, R adds three missing values to the joint data set and only considers the information for the Gini index in Greece for the year 2017. Uh, and that is because here the right data set um, takes precedence. Note, however, that this does not change the way you need to specify the, um, the correspondence um, uh, columns here in, in the by statement. Here you always have the, um, uh, the rule that left data set or column name in the left data set and correspondence in the right data set. This is really just about which um, of the data sets takes precedence when choosing which, uh, which rows to keep in the joint data set or not. Now, you might also say that um, all this is rubbish, uh, that you want to keep as much information in the two data sets as possible 
no matter how many missing values are added in the in the final data set. So if you want to do that, you could use the function called full join. Um, again, the syntax is exactly the same. So we just need to adjust here the name of the function call. And if we have here uh, our full call, you see that um, we now have a data set with five rows. And that is because full giant preserves all the observations that are either in the right or in the left data set. Um, so in this case, we got information for Greece 2015, 17 and 18 and information for Germany is 17, 18. But now we have missing values added in both the Gini row and the GDP row because um, if you use full join, R really um, takes into account all observations where at least one uh, observation is, uh, is present and it adds more missing values. Now, which of the of, of these join functions uh, you you want to choose in practice depends on your preferences and what you want to achieve with the data. There is also another one you might uh, use quite frequently that is called inner join. But how this works, I actually leave to you uh, as an exercise so you can um, implement um, inner join with these data sets and uh, check out for yourself what is actually uh, the underlying rule. This might also help you to actually familiarize yourself with um, how uh, these join functions actually work.